Now we want to show you the application with the EG570. As you can see, mix your batch as you normally would, and pour the material into the hopper. From there, attach the spray head, and then with the quick release on the actual turbine, you just simply attach to the turbine and you're ready to spray. With the many advantages of this gun being the HVLP style head, you can see that you can change the orientation of your spray and the width of your spray pattern for better undershot on bed rails, to get better width in corners and grooves, and just better overall coverage. With this being an HVLP style spray gun, you do want to trim and cut in tight areas, corners, things of that type to ensure proper coverage and prevent shadowing. This gun adjusted at full, you're going to see approximately an 18 inch wide spray pattern. You can dial that in to approximately 6 inches to help cut in tight areas and corners and get the build that you're looking for. Also, as you can see on this bed rail, it will help reduce the overall overspray and loss of material to the floor. As you can see in this cut, one major advantage to the HVLP style head is being able to base in the corners and the tight areas with a tighter pattern and get the build that you're looking for without leaving light spots, speckles, or just thin areas that show through. When spraying with the EG570, you will use multiple batches in a truck bed just like we do with the traditional pneumatic guns. When reloading the hopper, it's much easier to remove the spray head, unscrew it from the hopper, pour your material into the hopper, reattach the spray head, and then reattach to the turbine. That way you're not trying to fight a fully loaded hopper and the weight of the turbine all at the same time. Spraying and overlapping at approximately 25% will ensure a even and thick mill coating. As you can see in this segment, the overspray is incredibly minimal, you know, allowing you to spray in various areas. This can even be done simply in a driveway or a parking lot, you know, things that can be a little messy or precarious when you're using a high volume or even the low volume pneumatic spray guns. Once the areas are cut in, come back through, base coat the entire sidewall. This will give you your base option. Now the material will lay out smoother because of the air pressure it's applied at. Just like with the traditional pneumatic guns, you can do a fog coat or a cast coat from outside of the vehicle to build texture as desired. The Scorpion EG570 is an excellent option for control of overspray, areas where you don't have access to compressors, and a great option for mobile installations, you know, allowing you to operate simply with a generator, no compressor required. Now as we're wrapping up on the opposite side wall, we spray just like we do with the traditional guns. You start with one side wall, trim an outline, then base coat, move to the headboard, spray the opposite side wall, and then from there you're ready to walk yourself out of the truck bed. Now we've wrapped up the side walls and the headboard and we'll move to the floor of the truck. As you can see, always spray vertically with the ribs of the truck. That will prevent shadowing on the outside edges of the ribs or possibly getting a material overlay which would eventually roll and sag on the outside of the ribs. Always keep in mind your distance to the substrate can be crucial. The velocity at the tip is approximately 20 to 25 PSI. So if you do get too close to the wet material, you stand a chance of putting air waves in the material and leaving an unattractive finish. If that does happen, you can simply wipe it down with a rag, smooth out the material, and retexture over top. Again, you know, even with the floor sections, you want to run at approximately a 25% overlay on your passes, ensuring an even coating. Generally, when spraying the floor of a truck, we'll break it into thirds. Spray the first third, step back, spray the second third between the wheel wells, and then actually step down out of the pickup to finish the last third from the floor. This allows easy buildup and to finish out the exterior edges of the bulkheads and the base of the tailgate. Wrapping up the floor, now spraying the backside of the rear bulkheads of the bed. Then we'll move around to the outside rail. You spray the top of the rail from inside the truck when you were spraying the side walls. Now that you're outside, come back across the tape line to get a nice mill build on the rail for protection of loading ladders, lumber, anything that folks would slide over the outside edge. 
again you can see that the overspray is incredibly minimal our cameraman's right up next to that deal no overspray whatsoever now last but not least we spray the tailgate one thing to keep in mind with the tailgate you do have so many transverse edges that you want to spray it from all four directions literally start from one end work to the opposite work it from top and bottom that way you make sure you don't leave any shadows or thin areas that would show through after the material dries in this section just like we do with traditional guns you do a fog coat or a mist coat from outside of the truck bed to build additional texture this is completely up to the applicator some folks like a smooth orange peel finish that's what the EG570 will produce straight off of the gun if you do like the more aggressive, uh, abrasive style look, then what you'll want to do is from the exterior, work from one side of the truck to the opposite, fogging over the liner with as much distance as you can make. That allows the particles to stand on themselves and give you that more aggressive finish. Even with the misting and fog coat, you can see the overspray and the fog created from the gun is little to nothing. 80 to 90% of your material is maintained in the truck bed. What we see with traditional guns, you lose 30 to 40% of material to the floor. So this is going to be a huge cost savings in the long run.